Hey everyone, welcome back to the Work and Dirt channel and the Hemi LJ build project. As you saw in the last video, we got the roll cage in and the new bed liner in the tub. And now we are ready to put the tub on the frame, except we need to first secure some wiring and some plumbing, fix some connectors uh, that hold the wiring in and uh, inspect it, make sure it's all good. And then we're gonna install also some new aftermarket fenders, which are pretty cool. So stick around to see those and uh, let's get working. Okay, we almost had the roll cage already all in. She's going around real quick and making sure every uh, bolt uh, gets its final snug. While she's doing that, like I said, I'm getting back to the wiring. And as I see, as I see, uh, you gotta inspect stuff very closely, every tube, every wire, uh, after something's been in an accident. And I found that the power wire for the starter got pinched. That's pretty good. You don't want that, we can definitely short stuff out. And then I also saw that these were pinched. So I opened it up. Um, I'm probably gonna splice it. Um, fix it and uh, I'll continue to look at other things and find out which connectors you know like all these connectors that plug in that hold your plumbing you know they get worn out when you take them out and push them back in they can only do that so many times so I'm making note of every single thing that needs to go back and uh, that way we feel a lot safer on the trail ain't that right Tara safety, safety first All right, we got a little electrical connector in here that's being a little pain. It's the thing that transfers signal to the tailgate. It's a little rubber plug. She's trying to get, she's almost got it. I got my secret jelly here, a little silicone grease. If we, but I think she's got it. There, you just keep pushing it from each end. There you go, a little, keep, keep, keep pushing it from all different ways and it'll work itself. In. There you go. And then, and then this thing, a little uh, prong or whatever you call it, um, we should clean this so it makes good contact. Yeah. Um, clean this, at, give it a little sanding or use that brass brush. Okay. Clean it, clean this, right. and then, clean these sides too. yep, give that a little brushing so we have good contact. Okay. No we corrosion left unremoved. I was gonna say, it's always good to have good communication. Oh yeah. So very important to remember what order you do some things. So uh, the exhaust wasn't getting in because the third link up front was in the way. So we dropped that and now we're gonna hopefully tuck it up in. Um, and the guy who did the exhaust told me it was quite a feat to do because um, it was obviously so tight and compact here, as you can see, it's, it's, they, and that was, I don't think they took my body off. So they did all that from underneath, which is, Pretty amazing. Yeah. All right, let's get this thing up here now. I'll give you a closer look. So there's the two cats, pretty tight. We got a little flex coupler here, which is very nice. I installed that because I didn't want more strain on this. I don't like extra strain on these headers um, or the stock manifold, I should say. Um, but that's where we're connecting it. All right, we got the Luber over there in the corner. No pressure, Tara. 
No pressure. She is taking the time real quick to um, lube up the body bushings for the body lift uh, so that we don't get squeaking because your main squeaking in vehicles is usually your leaf spring bushings or body mount bushings or other random rusty metal. So we're just putting a little in here. The bolt will go in the middle, but oh. the main squeak, oh, that's fine. It probably doesn't hurt to put it in as many places as possible. Sorry, I'm trying to keep my poison oak hand out of the picture, but mm -mm. trying to show you, this is, I think a, a two inch lift, body lift. I don't know, I think the stock is one inch, so maybe it's just a one inch lift, but it's required uh, for a Hemi conversion. So. Oh, it's not for the long arms? Well, the long arms are part of the suspension lift, but in order to do all the engine exhaust, all that stuff and fit it all, fit it all you need your body a little higher, so. Yes. Ah. And she's getting it dirty. We're gonna get that fastened up. We have the exhaust propped up right there. And uh, then after that, we got our wires. Oh yeah, we gotta get our brake lines in. We got the fuel line plugged in, but we got a still a little wiring back there and the brake lines to put on before we get the tub set on top. So we're starting today with getting underneath the tub and making sure we have all the wires and uh, um, cable components hooked up in the correct way. And we have the tub barely suspended about six inches above the frame. And she says we have to go higher now because we're about to hook up the shift cable, which you see there's a bracket right here. Oops. And that gets mounted right here. So once we get, um, there's not much that needs to be connected. We've got the emergency brake, the four wheel drive shift selector, and then the main shift selector has cables that we're going to connect. Once that's connected, um, then you basically have the fuel line that gets um, routed through here and then basically attaches to the little plate that's in here and then I think the evap container yeah terror she put that up here in the tub um, but other than that it goes to the front now as far as what needs to be assembled and we have the wiring harness which gets routed in here and the computer gets mounted here and once we have all the wiring plugged in uh, then we can put the fenders on I don't want to block our access you know plugging things together until I feel like we got everything or I know we got everything one thing after the other all right all right right now I'm trying to pass the four-wheel drive cable, I think it is, through that hole. Hold on, go back out. Okay. There we go.
Well everyone, we were successful in getting the tub dropped on the frame and the plumbing connected. The only major issue we ran into was an issue already knew from the start was going to be one, which was uh, locating the right fasteners for certain areas. Uh, but we, we tend to go to Napa Auto Parts a lot because they're very close to get certain connectors and hardware pieces. Even though we are eager because we're getting closer to the finish line, we're getting that finish line fever, but we have to stay focused so we don't miss any parts. Uh, but next time we are going to be installing the grill, a new condenser, a new radiator, and also some sexy poison spider defender flares or fenders and uh, inner fenders as well. We got the whole kit and caboodle. So stay tuned for next time. And thanks for your viewership. It helps our channel support veterans, trails, and charities each quarter. Until next time, get your Jeep on the road.